Church Street, Pretoria, 1983. Amanzam Toti, 1985. ANC bombs remind ordinary white South Africans there is war. The bomb that caused the biggest emotional outcry exploded in Church Street, Pretoria in the late afternoon of May 20, 1983. Nineteen people were killed and 219 injured. The ANC claimed responsibility. Aimed at military personnel, it was mainly civilians who were injured and killed. The two men who set the bomb also died in the blast. James Simpson worked in the building across the way from the blast and considers himself lucky to have escaped with minor injuries. Can you tell us what you expect of the Commission? I think that the people who are responsible for this should be apprehended, they should be brought to justice and be punished. That, that is my opinion. But you say that the findings have already been made that the two people who planted the bomb have already been killed, they're, they're already dead. Yes, but those are not the people who actually gave the order to plant the bomb. Marina Geldnes was in her first job after leaving school with her life ahead of her. She was physically badly injured and suffered emotionally as well. I had a very late ouderdom. It was only about two years ago that I really went for psychiatric help. It did help me to some extent to, to really get over the worst of it. I would like to say that the guilty parties must be brought to justice and they must reveal their reasons and motives for this attack. I wasn't really politically aware at that time. From a very early age, I was confused as regards politics. We didn't really know what was right and what was wrong. And How do you feel about the political situation now? At that point in time, you said that you were an innocent bystander caught in the conflict. How do you feel now, 13 years later? The new government is of significance to me because it means that I can sit here today and tell my story. Earlier, this would not have been possible. Two years later, the Sunlum Centre in Amanzam Toti was full of Christmas holiday makers and shoppers when a bomb hidden in the arcade went off. The ANC claimed responsibility and later a youth, Andrew Zondo, was arrested, charged and hanged for the offence. Five people died in the blast. Among them, Cornio Smith. He was eight years old. At the time, his father shocked many white South Africans by what he said. I told the newspapers that I thought my son was a hero because uh, he died uh, for freedom for, for people that was uh, 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 can I say Afrikaans? For people who were under drug was many people had my quality and they had to think that he was a verrier and uh, condemned me but, but I still feel that way today I feel that, uh, that a few white people in this country would ever have found out what it was all about if if somebody didn't have the courage to stand up and say this is for freedom, everybody just branded the ANC as, as terrorists and never saw the other side of the coin. Bishop Tutu's reply to his testimony reinforced the belief that reconciliation lies with the ordinary South African. That the reason why we still have this hope, that reconciliation will triumph in the end, is because there are people like yourself. And we would like to say how much we appreciate what you've done. And then there was the Potchefstroom bomb in October 88, planted in a building that housed the security police. Whose work was this? In the mind of Michael Mayer, it was an example of third force activities.
If it was an ANC bomb, my colleague, who, who was the previous witness, came to explain to me that they used a different kind of explosive device than that used by the military or the police. And I also received a letter from Brigadier in the regional court of the security branch. They said that they didn't know who were responsible for this attack. But if there was a policy of detonating bombs and committing sabotage, I believe that it falls within the ambit of this commission's terms of reference to investigate this and to reopen the docket to be able to ascertain what the position now is.